Good afternoon and welcome back, Switch attendees, for our exciting session this afternoon, The Journey Towards Sustainable Mobility. I'm Dale Hardcastle, a partner with Bain & Company here in Singapore, and happy to be your host this afternoon. 2020 has been an important year and an inflection point for the transport industry. The impact of COVID is accelerating many long evolving trends we've seen around the mobility transition. We've also seen continued sort of growth in electric vehicle demand in many markets around the world despite COVID and focused stimulus programs in many countries to drive the green economy forward and promote wider use of hydrogen in the future. This has really sort of created a renewed conviction that the mobility transition is going to accelerate in the coming decade. Given the multiple forces at work, we are very fortunate to have our next speaker here today, Dr. Yong Cho Ji, the President and Chief Innovation Officer of Hyundai Motors Group. Dr. Ji leads Hyundai's Strategy, Innovation and Technology Group and has direct oversight of their strategy around mobility globally. Prior to his time at Hyundai, Dr. Ji spent a decade at Samsung Electronics and before that worked in a variety of different technology roles globally. Dr. Ji also holds a a degree in sort of engineering from Seoul National University and multiple degrees, including a PhD in applied mathematics from Brown University of the US. Please join me in welcoming Dr. G to the stage this afternoon. I'm so glad to be given this opportunity to talk about Hyundai Motor Group's journey towards sustainable mobility from the electrification angle at this switch conference in Singapore. According to the recent United Nations report, the number of reported natural disasters has almost doubled during the past 20 years compared to the previous 20 years. And it claimed a huge number of human lives and increased the size of the economic losses. These statistics show how serious climate change is to damaging our planet Earth. This global climate change issue drew huge attention in international community, and it became a high political priority in many countries for the past 10 years. So the head of 195 countries gathered in Paris about two years ago and signed now the famous Paris Agreement in order to tackle this climate change issue. With the signing of this agreement, Norway and Netherlands became uh, one of the most immediately announced their national policy to ban the sales of combustion engine vehicles from 2025, and many countries followed that. Automotive industry also followed this trend in a way that they started to establish the roadmap to expand their eco-vehicle models for the future. For example, we plan to increase the eco-friendly vehicle models to 44 within the next four years, five years. In the near future, we believe that the eco-friendly vehicle market will expand rapidly and battery EV as well as fuel cell EV will be dominant in the market. Leading car makers plan to integrate electrical motors and control parts into a common platforms for the cost efficiency. And we believe that the battery EV is better suited for mid-range distance, while fuel cell EV is for longer distance purpose. Our eco-friendly vehicle developments has come a long way. In 2009, we introduced our first hybrid vehicle. Five years ago, we completed mass production lines for all four types of vehicles, which is the hybrid, plug-in hybrid, full battery EV, as well as fuel cell EV. And this year, we produced 20 different uh, eco-friendly vehicle models. Since Ray EV was first introduced in 2011 as our first electric vehicle. Ionic became the world's uh, most energy efficient electric vehicle in 2016 with over 200 kilometer range. And uh, recently, Kona has the record for longest range electric vehicle at over 400 kilometer. 
We also have high performance electric vehicle as well as premium electric vehicle uh, in our uh, future lineup. We have established the two major directions for battery EV development. One is this uh, EV exclusive integrated platform that we call eGMP. It's a platform which allows applying different battery capacity for different segments. The other major direction is the next generation battery. And we have dedicated to develop this uh, all solid state battery. Well, it's made by replacing liquid electrolyte in a conventional battery cell with a solid state substance. And it enables us to achieve ultra high energy density. Next, I'd like to briefly cover what to do with these used battery packs as it creates risk and opportunity at the same time. Hyundai Motor Group sees the business opportunity on used battery-based energy storage systems. With acquired rapid battery evaluation technologies, we are preparing for the commercialization on used battery energy storage system business. Now, let me move on to hydrogen. Hydrogen enables the renewable energy system. In addition, hydrogen will, will decarbonize various applications from transportation to feedback, feedstock. For example, it will help decarbonize transportation as well as industrial energy use and building heat and power. This June and July, numerous governments have announced their own mid to long-term roadmap for hydrogen. For example, in Germany, they have announced in early June uh, their plan to make an investment in hydrogen fields in the amount of 9 billion euros and creation of dedicated organization. In EU, they have established the so-called Hydrogen Society EU by 2015, 2050, and also this uh, uh, Clean Hydrogen Alliance. In the case of California, they have also announced what's called the Advanced Clean Trucks Regulation, where uh, they expect the culmination of 100% zero emission trucks in California by 2045. Korean government is also very aggressive with its hydrogen roadmap. Prime Minister recently led Hydrogen Economy Committee which was established in July with Hyundai Motor Group playing an active role. We plan to produce over 6 million fuel cell EVs and establish, the, establish 1,200 hydrogen refueling stations by 2040. Let me now cover fuel cell EV history at Hyundai. For over 20 years, we have consistently and continuously devoted our resources on the development of fuel cell electric vehicles. We initiated this fuel cell development well over 20 years ago. And in 2013, uh, we actually had this first generation fuel cell EV called the Tucson, which was the first mass produced fuel cell electric vehicle. And two years ago, during the uh, Winter Olympic, we have introduced our second generation fuel cell EV called Nexo. It has a, a much more superior maximum range and energy efficiency. You can actually refuel Nexo within five minutes and it can drive uh, over 600 kilometer once you charge it. We also built the first fuel cell truck and exported 
10 of them to Switzerland this past summer. We plan to ship 1,600 of these trucks to Switzerland within the next five years. Fuel cell bus development has resulted in city bus pilot program this year in Korea. And within two years, we will also have coach bus for police use and for longer distance travel. In order to be ready for hydrogen society, in addition to cars, trucks, and buses, we are deeply involved with stationary fuel cell, energy station infrastructure, and hydrogen production and delivery. This is simply because we have to cover the full value chain and the hydrogen ecosystem to be able to build the hydrogen society in Korea and beyond. In the shipping and railroad industries, fuel cells are considered as one of the energy sources to respond to future environmental regulations. We continue to develop these fuel cell technologies in those fields as well as urban air mobility and energy generators sectors. So it has very wide range of potential application areas. As part of this Hydrogen Vision 2030, we plan to invest over 6 billion US dollars to build production lines capable of producing 700,000 units of these fuel cell systems in order to secure leadership in the coming hydrogen economy by 2030. And our annual production of fuel cell electric vehicle will reach half a million within the next 10 years. Let me wrap up with just two slides to cover the topic of open innovation and what we are doing in Singapore. We want to accelerate synergy from open innovation that leverages a wide range of outside of the box ideas, technologies, and uh, required talents. Our focus areas for future growth is mobility services, smart city, energy, robotics, and urban air mobility. And uh, obviously AI is the underlying enabling technology for us to take a leadership role in these five future business domains. We have a very tight and broad cooperation with Singapore. For example, we are building HM Gigs, which stands for Hyundai Motor Group Innovation Center in Singapore, AI Research Center and Cradle for active cooperation with Singapore. For example, with HM Gigs, we had this uh, opening ceremony uh, due to COVID, it was virtual, but we will start the construction of this facility to transform customer experience through future mobility R&D in Singapore. We will also co-locate this AI research center and cradle in this new facility. And uh, the purpose of this uh, AI research center is pursuing a close cooperation with AI experts in Singapore. And we will establish in Singapore this cradle, which we have already in four locations in order to strengthen open innovation efforts across not only products, but also services in the ASEAN region. So I want to thank you for your interest in Hyundai Motor Group's journey toward sustainable mobility from the electrification angle at this switch conference in Singapore.
Dr. G, thank you. That was a fascinating presentation. Very exciting to see all the different things happening across Hyundai globally in the mobility space and a lot of you know, rich ground for us to, to have questions and, and talk about different things. I'd like to kick off the, the Q&A by you know, talking a little bit about ASEAN and, and new technology adoption. You know, Hyundai has the privileged position of and benefit of a global and local perspective on the mobility transition from many different markets around the world. Uh, and while much of the rest of the world is moving very, very quickly to adopt EVs and look at you know, different sorts of solutions, Southeast Asia itself is still moving at a relatively sort of slow pace to adopt solutions beyond you know, the success that we've seen in shared mobility with the likes of Grab and Gojek. Hmm. How exactly you know, do you envision these technologies are likely to be adopted by ASEAN moving forward, given where we start from today? Well, Dale, I completely agree with you that ASEAN market has such a big upside for mobility innovation. However, it has not gained full traction yet in terms of electrification. Capturing electrification potential in ASEAN will require multifaceted approach. First, the customers in ASEAN have to become more familiar with EVs and its underlying technology. They are hesitant to make the shift to EVs due to high upfront costs and concerns regarding battery charging. Singapore lacks the subsidies that can lower the upfront costs of EVs for consumers, which makes government involvement in this matter much more important. In order to promote awareness, Hyundai has strategically partnered with Grab and we are working together to provide the EV mobility pilot services in Singapore and Indonesia. Second, we've got to build upon the awareness and continue to build an EV ecosystem. From our EV pilots, we are seeing that we need more charging infrastructure, better price accessibility, and residual value certainty. The private and public sector should collaborate closely to tackle these challenges by building more infrastructure and services, as well as creating supportive policies for EV adoption. I mean, one of the things that is, is lacking as we you know, think about the way forward, if we look at you know, the response of, of kind of governments and regulations, as you, as you talk about in Southeast Asia, is you know the kind of sort of support that we're seeing with you know green stimulus in many many other countries around the world. Um, do you think that more stimulus and action is is likely to take place, or are we going to have to continue to really rely on market forces to to drive us forward? Well. You know, I mentioned in my uh, presentation this uh, newly launched uh, Hyundai Motor Group's Innovation Center in Singapore. You know, it's actually a lot more than a manufacturing site. This facility will not only work as an intelligent EV manufacturing platform, but it will also function as a center for R&D, partnership incubation, and a new business concept development such as battery as a service. So the goal is to innovate the entire mobility value chain in a human-centered way. And during our groundbreaking ceremony in mid-October, we announced three strategic directions. First is to enhance the value of work and the dignity of workers through a human-centered digital transformation. Second is to build customer-centered smart mobility ecosystem and third one is to contribute to building the Singapore's smart nation as a responsible industry member of the ecosystem. So this HM gigs will also be home to our Open Innovation Hub Cradle and the AI Research Center for the ASEAN. So that's a, a very you know, interesting sort of addition to the, the Singapore innovation ecosystem. Uh, could you share a little bit about you know, how Hyundai made its decision to, to put multiple centers in Singapore and how you thought about that? Well, 
You know, we have this uh, cradle, which is this open innovation hub in other countries and other locations like uh, Beijing, Menlo Park and uh, Berlin, as well as uh, uh, in Tel Aviv. But we felt that the uh, ASEAN market has also big upside potential. And uh, we felt that uh, opening another uh, such open innovation hub uh, would be ideal for Singapore. And, uh, you know, we all know Singapore is uh, really a hub for a lot of uh, things happening in Southeast Asia. So not only manufacturing, as I said, but also you know, AI is a hot topic and there are so many uh, uh, talents in that uh, area. So we felt that uh, this is the right next move. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Singapore, you know, clearly has, you know, great potential in being a sort of a test bed and the sort of innovation center, you know, for the country as well as the region. Uh, but if we look more broadly in the region, you know, Indonesia, of course, looms as one of the, the biggest sort of potential untapped markets as we look to the future. How do you see in Indonesia likely to evolve as a market as it takes its first steps towards EVs? And you know what catalysts are missing today that are needed to, to get the market to take off? As you just mentioned, Dale, uh, Indonesia is clearly one of the most important market in ASEAN. It's also a strategic market for us as we plan to open our new factory next year. At the same time, Indonesia is home to the world's largest nickel, nickel reserves which is one of the critical material for batteries. It also has a competitive labor costs and these two factors when combined could create a virtuous cycle between battery and EV production. If fostered with the right stimulus, I think that Indonesia could become one of the leading EV production hub in the world. The goal, the goals are there. And I believe that we need more proactive policies and support from the government to fully unlock this upside potential. We want to help drive the growth of Indonesia. And that's why we are focused on battery EVs and not hybrids. We believe battery EVs are the right technology that can leverage the car manufacturing in Indonesia. We've already implemented EV mobility services in Indonesia and Grab as a first mover and we are looking into ways to make EVs far more approachable through services and mobility offerings. Interesting, yeah. Uh, I mean, I think we can all see the immense potential as we look across the, the different sort of, you know, countries in the region and, you know, many sort of countries and the different sort of players are, are looking, you know, very sort of strategically at what to do. Uh, but if we were to, to step back and rewind, uh, you know, the last decade has really evolved in a direction that, that few of us had predicted if we were to go back to 2010. Uh, and in many ways, it's likely the mobility transition that's already underway is sure to sort of surprise us in the coming years as, as we see fits and sort of stops across, you know, different elements. Yet the stakes here are obviously super high and there's an immense prize for the, the countries and the companies that are able to get this right and sort of lead us to the new future that you've I think articulately sort of shared with us. What do you think it's going to take to win in the, the decade ahead in, in the mobility sort of space? And, you know, how is Hyundai, you know, different from the other OEMs who are also positioning, uh, you know, in the race? Well, I think that uh, uh, it's a tough question, but a great question for the audience. I believe that we have to look beyond the traditional auto landscape to lead the mobility transition. We thought pretty hard about what it really means to provide mobility to our customers. So our vision to become the smart mobility solution provider tells you a lot about our future direction. As our chairman Chung has mentioned uh, a few times in the past year or so, we are aiming to shape our group's future business portfolio to be 50% uh, cars, 30% urban air mobility and 20% robotics. This is rather unusual for a traditional car manufacturer. And uh, our approach to make this vision a reality is through open innovation. So our recent partnership with startups like uh, Arriver for electric 
purpose-built vehicles in UK or with Aptiv, which is located in Boston for autonomous driving. And, uh, you know, in January at CES, we announced a partnership with Uber for offering urban air mobility because we can build these electric vertical takeoff landing vehicles. But uh, we want to partner with the uh, mobility service provider like Uber, who has a great knowledge and understanding and data about how to move people. So this shows you that we are being more agile and uh, you know we are committed. Action speaks louder than words. So we are really ready for future transition. So uh, this kind of approach makes uh, Hyundai different. Great. I mean, Dr. G, I think that really nicely speaks to the, the dynamism that we're seeing in the blurring of uh, different sort of parts of the ecosystem today. You know, whether we, we talk about electric or sort of hydrogen, uh, different types of mobility solutions, and of course, you know, what's happening with a lot of innovation. Uh, that probably uh, provides a, a nice sort of point for us to sort of jump off and, and take some broader questions from the audience, since I'm sure they too have a lot of questions around the, the domain and the different subjects that we've talked to. Uh, 